at UNC Charlotte and we are underway here in College Park as the Terps try to get back to 500 after those three straight losses they had a bounce back win in their last game and the first shot of the night from Harris Smith rims out well South Alabama started out in a 2-3 zone looking to pack it in because Maryland possesses a height advantage in the paint and Greg Manning one of the assistant coaches for Maryland told me prior to the game that they want to play inside out but their first shot was a three well, South Alabama using that zone a little bit over the last couple of games Kevin Willard said he was surprised to see Richie Riley doing that lately but figured it would continue tonight and South Alabama's on the board first Isaiah Gator does it for the Jaguars one of the assistant coaches for South Alabama coach Bailey he said that Gator has to be one of those glue guys for his team and they have to come out ready to go and there he is knocking in the first bucket now Gators averaged 20 points over his last four games Harris Smith leaped a defender on South Alabama does shoot pretty well 45 percent from the field around 33 percent from three shooting has been an issue for Maryland to start the year especially from behind the three-point line yeah, they've struggled especially in the Villanova game they missed 20 uncontested threes in that game and really couldn't find the bottom of the net in that second half there's a three from Margrave off the mark and it will bounce out of bounds 26 so he's taking a high volume the most attempts on the team from three just about and with that size and stretch ability if you will on the court you have to honor that range Maryland trying to get in the paint and it's taken away by Gator Gator leads South Alabama that's his ninth steal on the other end the basket can't go down for Millinder and it's Maryland ball after a rebound South Alabama only averages five steals per game but if they're going to double down right away on the catch in this zone you have to be aware and go to the baseline side of things where there is no help go away from that double team or that dig down from the high side the mismatch with Reese towering over land looking for the ball coming from Young it goes the other way to Scott and a three is off the mark but Reese is there for the rebound now a three on the way from Young and that's no good Maryland shooting problems continuing to start this game and as Young goes inside he has the ball taken away and then commits a foul sometimes the zone baits you into taking those outside shots right you feel the shot clock is not on your side you rush the issue but Maryland just needs to play composed against that zone and try to whittle it down by attacking with a dribble drive to those elbow areas or to the nail and then collapse that defense and then you can get some spray out threes that will probably be a little bit more viable and not contested as much. You were looking for some twos early on, but all three shots have been from three-point range to this point. Mm -hmm. Gator wiggles around. Young gets a clean look. But Reese able to pull down the rebound. Reese coming off of a double-double against UMBC in their last game where they did shoot the ball a little bit better than they did against Villanova, especially in that second half here at home. Reese gets fouled by Maxwell Land. It was a 57-point first half in that game as well. Davidson, UAB, and the third one against Villanova. Well, what Kevin Willard has said about their offense, if they have some stagnant offense, it's tough for them to get into their press. Another three, but that one goes down. It's Jameer Young getting the Terps on the board with their fourth shot attempt from three-point range. Well, here's that press. Against UMBC, they started three-quarter court. And now here against South Alabama, you see them all the way up above the free throw line. And that's what Greg Manning said. We want to squeeze them. We want to speed them up, not just in the full court, but also in the quarter court as well. Try to throw some traps at them. Try to blow up their early actions on the offensive end. That's a double team. Land is in trouble. He's out of bounds off South Alabama. So there's the Maryland defense. Have the sideline and the baseline as extra defenders on that play, forcing the turnover. That pass was knocked away and stolen. Thomas Howell tipped it out. Third turnover from Maryland. Sticking with their man-to-man -man defense. They like to switch one through four or even one to five. Margrave three. That's good for Julian Margrave. Maryland's defense was hoping to make life difficult for Margrave, especially on those plays where he's going to catch and shoot from three-point range. Yeah, Margrave, he started three games this season, so he's been a stabilizing force because of his ability to stretch the floor like that and knock in those triples. Now nine for 18 from three-point range on the year. This is Young stepping back, his three too long. 
And the rebound was last touched by Maryland. Needs to get some shots in the paint. Greg Manning, one of the assistant coaches for Maryland, said that that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to have some intentionality about getting touches on the interior where they possess an advantage. They haven't done that quite yet. Reese matched up with Howell, who's all over him in the paint. Here's another long shot. It comes from Jahari Long, and it's out of bounds. It will belong for the Crimson Tide. Michigan knocked off Ohio State today. It's been a wild day of college football. So wrapping it up here tonight in College Park with some hoops as Maryland tries to get back to 500. They're two and three to start the year. Yeah, they've had a rough start out of the gates, but it's been because they haven't been consistent on the offensive side. So they're really trying to find out who they are on that end. Howell gets it past Reese and South Alabama an 8-3 start. South Alabama still sitting in their 2-3 zone, just trying to clog that painted area. And Kevin Willard, the head coach at Maryland, said, hey, we only have three guys who really played a lot of minutes for us last year. Reese on the offensive rebound, tries to go back up, and it rolls through for Julian Reese. Well, that's something that Maryland is going to have to do, right? Get second and third chance opportunities, maximize their possessions by attacking the offensive boards. Well, if they're going to miss threes, it's good to have the big yeah. man in the middle there, Reese. Yeah, but those sometimes go long, so all the guards have to be on board and join the party as well on the glass. This is Howell trying to back down on Reese, and for the second time, Thomas Howell gets a bucket over Julian Reese. Yeah, no double team coming down to take away the space for Howell on the interior. And Julian Reese just has to stay loose to disallow that easy touch to come inside. Well, Reese is known for battling big men in the Big Ten. He yep. certainly did well in that regard last year. There's a couple inches on Howell as Geronimo loses the ball inside. Another turnover for Maryland. That's the fourth time. Give credit to South Alabama for crowding that space, making it difficult. Trying to scoop it through was Melender, and he couldn't get it down for South Alabama. Coming from the Sun Belt team that's picked to finish sixth in that conference, James Madison, a ranked team right now, and one of the best mid-majors in the country, picked to finish first in the Sun Belt this year. Yeah, the Sun Belt is going to be tough. Uh, JMU, they upset Michigan State earlier this season, so you got to be ready to compete. Reese dribbles out of a double team. Shot clock at five for Maryland. Another long three. It's Young off the mark, not even close. And that one falling to Melender as it is South Alabama ball again after another missed three. Maryland one for eight behind the arc. Well, Maryland needs to get some ball reversals, right? Get to the second and third side. Really try to collapse that zone. Make them shift and move because they're going to pay attention to the dribble drive. you got to try to get into the paint and make them shift. Now Gator, the force of South Alabama's offense, lures the defense one way, misses the jump shot the other. And a rebound for Maryland as Long brings it across. The defensive transition and good spacing right there for South Alabama. No easy buckets on the Reese with the touch pass. Geronimo gets it to go down. Now one of the better names in basketball, Geronimo, gets that one with great hands. And he brings some experience with him as well. He was at IU for a while. Geronimo coming from Indiana where he played 82 career games. So he knows life in the Big Ten. And that extra big man for Maryland along with Reese. Yeah, it takes some pressure off of Julian Reese on the interior. Doesn't have to do it alone, but Maryland had some injuries where Ju Julian Reese was the only player that was healthy on the interior. So he didn't really have anybody to go up against on a daily basis. But now everyone is... Coming back into the fold in that regard. Good defense by Kaiser on the previous possession. Forced a contested shot. Here's a baseline jumper missing for Geronimo. Reese tracks down the offensive board. Maryland gets another chance. Kaiser three. That's no good. And it will stay with Maryland after. He has 1,000 points here and 1,000 points at his previous school. And the first one to do that on the collegiate level since 2006. So give him his respect. But he's been a consummate leader for this Terps ball club. It's his fifth year. He came back because he said he had unfinished business. And he wants to come back and be that leader, not just statistically, but in every facet of the work. Well, speaking of a consummate leader, Dante Scott is the one that ties this game and hits a three. Scott, the fifth-year player, all five years in Maryland. And he gets the Terps back in the scoring column there. 
Margrave just went sprawling across the floor for South Alabama. Shot clock winding. Three from Jones. And that's too strong as Kaiser flies in for the rebound. South Alabama had their two guards in the corners, and you can't help off of them if they're shooters. Gave them the lane, but couldn't finish the play. Some youth in the lineup now. Harris Smith and Kaiser on the floor at the same time, along with the veteran Scott who kicks it out. Kaiser three off the mark. There's been a lot of three-point shots here from Maryland. Well, Kevin Willard has said uh, with his freshman, Jamie Kaiser in particular, sometimes things are going so quickly that when you catch it, the first thing you want to do is pull the shot, and you just have to make sure that that is in rhythm of the spacing of your teammates, number one, but also with your, your footwork and your balance when you're taking those shots. Marshall Keering hits the three and South Alabama back in front. What South Alabama has been able to do is space the floor very well. Maryland, they want to switch one through four or even one through five sometimes defensively to try to blow up early actions on the offensive end for South Alabama, but they don't look under duress. Pretty quick when you play a schedule like South Alabama does. They've had some tough games early on. They had to go to Tuscaloosa. They had their challenge against the MAC, the Sun Belt MAC challenge, where they won at Buffalo. Great. And just look at the double team that's coming out of this zone. Julian Reese was in the dunker spot, and they still brought a double team to him. Now Young around the screen from Dante Scott hits the three and ties it up. So a couple of threes early for Young. He has six points. Well, that's what you can do as well. And set some wall screens up top to get some clean looks from there, especially if they're going to be trapping on the short corner areas and on the on the blocks. Melinda misses the runner. And Maryland gets the rebound to try to take the lead for the first time in a little while. Kaiser lost control and it's out of bounds. Marcus Melender and Gator in the backcourt for South Alabama. Gator is senior. Melender is a true freshman. As Gator attacks all the way inside and draws the foul to the disbelief of Noah Batchelor. So he is shoulder to shoulder, squared up with Gator. First free throw goes for Gator, who was a transfer. Offensive productivity. And he started all seven games. He scored in double figures in six of their seven games coming into this one. So his consistency has also been top tier. Comes off for a moment. Ethan Kaiser checks in for South Alabama for the first time. South Alabama playing tough against Maryland. So one of the assistant coaches for South Alabama, Coach Bailey, he said, hey, we just want to test ourselves. We want to execute against some tough competition and see where we are early on in this season. Young fighting for possession with Melinda, who's called for the foul. Melinda I have a better one for you, but I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going <laughs> well, to hold on to well, it. That's a good. that's a good tease well, for Ethan, later. Ethan Kaiser, I'll give it to you. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Okay, you see, he has a great... Left, left hand and Reese goes to the line. You see Kaiser yeah. on, on South Alabama. Kaiser He's going to wait till he got a dunk, but we're going to just <laughs> unleash it. Look at that. Well, they should put 23 on him. What's he doing wearing 21? I, that's exactly what I thought myself. Hair Jordan. <laughs> and we'll look for Hair Jordan later. Reese, the lefty at the free throw line. And Maryland gets a couple for Reese. And that's good for Reese. You know, he struggled some from the free throw line. Just over 54% coming into this game. But it's an area that he is continuing to work on and improve. Melinder, Smurf. He might, you know, Smurf might be offended that you like Hair Jordan yeah. better. No, Hair Jordan is a total <laughs> win. A total win for him. This is Tyrell Jones making his way toward the basket. He gets it to Kaiser and Hare Jordan nails the three. There he is. There he is. I thought it was going to be a dunk because he had some forceful dunks in the warm ups today. <laughs> but he knocked in a nice, smooth triple for South Alabama. Not afraid. And he walks around with some swagger, too. He's not afraid of this moment. Dante Scott gets that one the way through. That's what they need from Dante Scott. They need for him to be a presence on the interior. They need to take advantage where they have an advantage, and that's on the blocks. Maryland's points in the paint could be a lot more. They have not put together much inside. Six points in the paint for the Terps to this point. 
See Maryland switching all five positions. It's almost like a matchup zone because they just bump off. It turns into a steal on his way to the basket. Young lays it down. For score mentality has to be top of the list of things to accomplish for this Maryland Terrapin team. They have got to get into those passing lanes and get live ball stops. There's another one out of bounds. So Maryland forces turnover boards and allowing for more opportunities to get buckets on the interior, which is what assistant coach for Maryland, Greg Manning, told me prior to the game. He said, we've got to maximize our advantage in the paint. Scott comes down with that long pass. It was intended for Scott, but he caught it and he scored it, and Maryland's up three. I think it was intended for Dante Scott maybe to get that alley-oop and catch it in the air and finish up there, but he got his body balanced, 10 toes down, and got it up and in off the glass. That puts Scott in the 25th in Maryland history and scoring 1,374 career points for the man who will eventually be the all-time leader in games played. On the interior, but was able to finish nicely inside. And South Alabama has been sitting in this zone, which has made it difficult for easy passes to go straight inside. And they're double teaming and crowding the space on the block as well. Now, Geronimo was crowded, but he scored anyway. Now, Maryland putting a run together, 8 nothing to go up by 5. Well, that's why when the double team is coming from the high side, you go baseline. Geronimo with a great read on that last play. Here's that 2-2-1. Two, two, pressure by Maryland and what they want to do they want to speed South Alabama up force them to make quick decisions with the basketball Gator shrugs off the defender young and pops the jumper that was a tough take by Gator individually covered by young put him right down into the paint where he had an advantage with his strength top of the arc three it's young in and out and rebound for Maxwell Lynn young has already knocked in two triples so now he's two of six from there but he can stretch the floor. You just have to be ready against that zone to free his space so he can get some clean looks up there. A lender only five foot eleven, at least listed. That means he's five nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just saying. Land <laughs> the kick out. Shot clock winding. Margrave has to put it up. And it goes through for Margrave. You know, he looked at the shot clock on the other and get some interior offensive production going here prior to halftime. I was off the foot of Margrave, so Maryland will inbound. And trap right here in the coffin corner. And that's right over half court line and right next to the sideline there where you have the extra defenders. Young cross court pass, three on the way, two strong. Land was trying to hit it off of Reese. Up for a rebound with you, we're next to each other. You gotta call it. Like you're you're probably gonna get it. I would I mean, say. Maybe, <laughs> maybe so. It depends on if I have my heels on or not. But <laughs> I might be able to get it. Dante Scott was fouled. Maxwell Land trying to punch the pass away ended up making. You break the zone down. If you're not gonna get dribble drives to the elbows, then get passes to the middle. On the catch and shoot, Dante Scott was fouled after the inbound from Harris. There's the first free throw for Scott. Tomorrow, more hoops excitement comes at 4.30 Eastern, presented by Jeep, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Two free throws for the veteran Dante Scott. We'd love to see that, shooting over 75% coming into this game from the line. And Maryland just playing some scrappy defense and gets the possession because of it. Jahari Long. The dogged intentionality on the defensive end. Look at Jameer Young's face. He's like, he's out. That's <laughs> our ball. You love that intensity from one of your leaders. Coming up on four minutes to play here in the first half. Maryland has the lead. They had to fight for it, and they've done better scoring inside. Scott kicks it around. Harris Smith for three. That's no good. Dante Scott fights for the offensive rebound, and he's fouled. Now, Harris Smith got that. So far in this game, they're six for nine from three-point range, three for 15, yet they keep taking the threes when the twos have been good. Yeah, I think they're doing a good job of overloading 
the zone and getting the ball to the nail, but then they have to get some cuts along that baseline area when that zone is blown up. Young lost his dribble. Tyrell Jones can't finish. And Julian Reese was there to grab the rebound. He has six. It's almost like the cherry on top. It's like you get everything else right and you just need that one extra thing to make everything sweeter, and that's a weak side cut. This is Young for three, another missed three from Maryland. When the twos, when they've taken them, yeah. have relatively been good shots that have gone down. Right, but you gotta get it to the second side. You gotta work that defense down and make them pay for shifting to the overloaded areas on the strong side. Gator over Reese gets the high bank. He's very crafty with his skill set. That's the third difficult shot that he's made in a contested area inside the paint. Gator is hiding in Division Two at Assumption at South Alabama. He's been pretty good. And there's a jump shot for Dante Scott, who's had a nice first half. Yeah, and sometimes when you get the ball to that nail or in that middle area right at the logo, just take the shot. Take the easy play. Make the easy play. Scott already has 11, his season high 14 in the last game against UMBC. Margrave for the three, rattles it through as Margrave's hit a couple and he ties the game. Yeah, he sure has, and that was another tough bucket for him. I mean, coming in shooting 50% from three and 51% from the floor, so very efficient. And they're sitting in that zone, and let's see how Maryland crafts an opportunity on this side of the floor. Margrave doesn't need much time or room to take a shot. Long misses a fairly open look at three. Offensive rebound, Dante Scott. He goes back up with it. 13 in the first half for the fifth year senior. Monster performance by Dante Scott, who is showing his strength and experience on the inside for the Terps. Well, where would they be in this first half without the effort of Dante yeah. Scott? Well, they need that. They need that paint production. Foul called on Bachelor as he reached in. Performance and effort. A three-point lead for Maryland nearing the end of the first half here at Xfinity Center. Bader gets the screen, makes his way toward the basket, tries to run around Dante Scott. And a foul is called, I think. That's coming away from the basketball. Now it's going to be on Scott. Dante Scott did a good job of moving his feet, but he's got to get his hands out and palms up to the ceiling, right, to show his hands are free. You can see it right here. His hands are down, and it was that second touch right there at the waist. Offensive foul is called on Margrave. Maryland inbounds after that. Turnover on the offensive foul. Here's some 2 2 1 from South Alabama. They've put it up on dead ball opportunities as well as some made shots. So, no specific rules on when Maryland will see this press. Have to get the ball to the second side. It's staying over there on the left. Yeah, they tried, and the pass yeah. too tall, even for Reese. Lock winding down on the first half. Maryland just three for 17 from three-point range. South Alabama is shot well, just not able to get enough shots off. Melender as he faded back, misses that jumper. Kicks all the way out toward half court where Margrave grabs it. Five-second difference between shot clock and game clock. And Howell called. We're looking to see if it was actually a three. So it's still 29-26. The point does not come off. It was already counted as a two previously. So they're probably going to take it down to eight now. Here's a double stagger action. Hargrave was fouled. Some contact from behind by Jordan Geronimo. Give. And South Alabama now in position to run down the clock. That's remaining here in the first half. So they're going to give him a high ball screen at eight. There it is. Gator had it taken away. Dante Scott knocked it out. Young at the buzzer gets the off, and it's just short. That would have counted, and it looked good. Played big minutes for them last year, but everyone else is relatively new to his philosophy and to what he wants his program to be. 
Second half starts here at Xfinity Center. Maryland nursing a three-point lead. Has not been a big lead for either team. Maryland trying to open it up a bit. And a chance to the free throw line for Jordan Geronimo for a three-point play. To the basketball and drop it down low. And then now they get the and one opportunity. But that's where they're going to find success. And that's what assistant coach Greg Manning said. We want to start inside out. And now they started the second half inside out. Their first shot at the beginning of the game was a three. Missed three there for Land. South Alabama four for eight from three-point range. They've shot just under 50% for the game. And still they've only scored 26 points. See, now they have Julian Reese running around in there at that triangle area, that nail, and then both blocks. Scott hits the three, and there's the inside-outside game for Maryland finally coming to fruition. There you go. You get a touchdown there, send it back out, force the defense to scramble to contest shots. In the first half, I thought Maryland made it too easy for South Alabama to guard them in taking those threes. New season high for Dante Scott. He is 16. When I say taking those threes, that's taking threes without committing the defense to the ball. What a shot by Margrave, the turnaround jumper. So no one will have done more in a Maryland uniform than Dante Scott. And he's had a good game here so far. Six or seven from the field, 16 points to go with four rebounds. And Lehman, Blake, and Gravis Vasquez, I mean, big time names that he's going to surpass. Scott with the pass there. Harris Smith for three. Freshman can't get that one to drop. Reese fights for the rebound and Land has it for South Alabama. This is Gator with the take inside. Now Margrave, the shot contested by Geronimo. Good job by Geronimo to crowd that space by Margrave. And he just almost had to turn his body, which made that shot go off the mark. See Geronimo creeping underneath the back line of the zone. There he is. Quick shot after the pass from Young, and Geronimo crept into the right position yeah. for a basket. But that's what you do. You go behind the zone and then drop the pass down there. It's there. They have the defense. They have their eyes on the basketball. They don't see you creeping behind. Eight-point lead. Maryland matching their biggest of the night. Either team led by more than five in the first half. Gator was fouled on his way to the basket. A nice, soft, feathery touch for Geronimo along that short corner area. That's where you kill the zone as well, at the nail and at the short corner, the dunker spot. There are a lot of different names for it, but that's where you have to go. Howell gets rejected by Reese as the big man goes. Here's the dribble drive by South Alabama and just a little bit too late on the rotation defensively for Maryland on that one. All out of bounds, the shot clock at seven. Defensively, a tip that I used to tell players when I was coaching is when your head turns, your foot has to be on the move as well. It can't be look and then move as too late. Gator just off the mark with that three-point attempt, the shot clock winding down. Harris Smith brings it up for Maryland. Feeds it to the big man inside. Reese draws a crowd, but scores anyway. <laughs> to the middle, go away from that double team that was trying to come and pinch down on that lane line. Nice recognition by Julian Reese and a great read. A much more fluid offense for Maryland so far in the second half. A 9-2 run since halftime. In the corner three for Land is nowhere near. Quickly up ahead, Dante Scott inside. Can't get it. Reese, a second chance is fouled. in the painted area here in the second half. We talked earlier about the growth of women's sports. Hard to not think about Julian Reese's sister. It's now at LSU. Maryland has an 11 point lead. Nice job defensively here by Maryland, just crowding the space, taking up the lane. Kieran can't get that one to go anywhere close after the defense from Reese. Now on the other end, Geronimo! And that's what Maryland needs to be doing against that zone, put the ball inside, and now they can trap and run their 2-2-1 two, two, press, and they called one right there on Reese. Foul. 
season or a portion of the season is right ahead of us, and I can't wait for that. Yep. I think it's going to be so much fun to see how things unfold. And no pun intended. Unfold. Oh, see, I, you know what? <laughs> I have bars. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> Margrave with the basket from the free throw line. Maryland with a good start here in the second half. 12-4, they have outscored South Alabama. Reese bullies his way through. Maryland has gone directly inside, right? They're right there at that mid post area on that entry pass and touch for Julian Reese. All he had to do was catch and shoot it. It's very simple. The game is a very simple game. <laughs> That's what you analysts always say. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you, make it, you make it difficult. <laughs> Geronimo got stuffed by the rim. Margrave helped out as well, and I believe on that one. But <laughs> all he had to do was just get into the body on the catch and finish at the rim. I mean, it's it's simple. Maryland's threes haven't really dropped here tonight. Four for 19 as a team, but the two-point shots have been there in the second half. They've been there even more because they're taking those opportunities. Absolutely, but that's why Greg Manning, the assistant coach, said, hey, we got to play inside out. It doesn't mean we're not going to take outside shots. It means take the inside first. Take those shots first, and then they're going to have to give you more space for those threes to fall later. Take away from Maryland. Geronimo gets the steal, feeds it up to Reese on his way through. Reese with the left hand, draws the foul. For the original foul on Reese was also called for the technical, and that's the technical free throw from Jameer Young. And, I mean, it's an emotional game, and that's part of the challenge to stay disciplined. It's not just tactically disciplined, but it's also mentally disciplined. And suddenly, this game that was a three-point advantage at halftime, five and a half minutes later, it's a 20-point game. Because the ball has gone inside. We get paint touches and paint finishes and also at times make their way to the free throw line because of that contact inside. It's amazing how fast this has turned. 21 to four since halftime mm -hmm. in favor of Maryland. That ball has gone right into the paint. Gator mm -hmm. takes down Geronimo who will get called for the block. And that shoulders to the offensive player who's coming at you. Especially with the emphasis now on that block charge going into this year. Absolutely. You know, really encouraging those defenders to get squared away and set their feet just as you said you can go side to side even backwards but you can't lean forward as a defender this is gator now up against young and not much control on the shot for gator who had a good first half he did he had a really strong first half for south alabama for sure he got the shots he wanted inside out it goes to young for three it's just short kaiser tips the rebound to reese and lays it down <laughs> Everybody on Maryland's team touched the basketball on that possession, and that's what they need. Shift and move the zone and then attack it on the interior. Reese with the rebound there. A double-double tonight for Julian Reese. 14 points, 11 rebounds. Tyrell Jones gets blocked by Reese. To a game. And he was towering over Jones and just swatted him down. Back-to-back yeah, -back double double performances in the last two games for Reese. Margrave shucks the defender there and nails the three. See the floor balance and spacing for Maryland against the zone has really been excellent here in the second half. Really forcing South Alabama to go a long way to close out on shots. Miss three by Young. Jones able to track down the rebound. Hargrave dribbles along the baseline. Nice move underneath by Julian Hargrave. The hang time by Hargrave was in full effect there. Nice body control and body balance for that finish. In a 22-point game against SIU Edwardsville earlier this year, career by Margrave was fantastic. So Julian Margrave, six foot ten sophomore, has had a good game. 16 points. He's been the team leader for South Alabama, the only Jaguar in double figures. Maryland has four players in double figures, including blind. 56% from the free throw line this year, but 
have been better tonight until then. Four for six in this game. Well, it's something that is a process, right? And it's all about reps. And it's not just reps, it's proper technique with those reps as well. And he's been working on it. Deshaun Harris-Smith put in a lot of extra work at the free throw line in practice earlier today. So he has struggled some at the line as well. This is Millender trying to go over the defense. Got the shot off, but wasn't able to get it near the basket. There's Harris Smith stopping pop for three. Reese, another offensive rebound. He's at a dozen total. Fights his way to the basket around Thomas Howell. See, that's what Julian Reese needs to continue to do. Utilize your strength inside and finish every time. Don't just do it sometimes. You're going to do it every single time. That's you. Yes, 16 points and 12 rebounds now. Another double-double. There's Kaiser for three. And a rebound for Dante Scott. Maryland has dominated the second half. Scott for three. Offensive rebound tracked down. Harris Smith leaves it off for Reese, who throws it out of bounds. He didn't have two hands on the basketball there. Of his 12 rebounds here in the second half. Maryland has shot 80% on their two-point attempts tonight, 16 for 20. Well, that's why, right? They've gotten a lot of buckets inside the lane and really forcing South Alabama to play at their weakness, which is size and size. Well, Margrave continues to have a good night for South Alabama. He is 8 for 11 from the field, and he has 18 points. He's been solid, and he's been consistent for South Alabama for sure, and it's been in a myriad of ways. All three levels, he's been effective. Maryland has outscored South Alabama 25-11 in the second half. Harris Smith, the only Terp starter not in double figures, allows Young to get to the basket and add two more. Oh, you love to see it. That was just such a smart play by Jameer Young to make the read, the up fake, get the first line of defense out of the way, and then attack the second and third levels of defense as well and finish. Maryland has a 19-point lead. Harris Smith do when someone tries to close you out up top you attack that hip you attack that top leg of your primary defender and get downhill nicely executed there gator over young gets the basket off the back of the eye of the backboard there he needs to continue to get touches for south alabama their assistant coach, Coach Bailey, said, hey, he's our glue guy, right? We need for him to organize us, but he also has the ability to score, and he hasn't really done that here in the second half. This is Reese with a double team coming his way. He turns it over. Gator was able to fly through, and then Reese from behind knocks that one out of bounds. At the rim <laughs> again. This is his third block of the evening. Gives him 13 now on the year. Tyrell Jones didn't want to be another victim. Gator for three. And Dante Scott has the rebound fall right to him. You don't block the shot. Your presence alone, because you have blocked three shots, is going to disallow any attempts coming your way. Ball movement to Kaiser. It's way off. I've seen Jamie Kaiser knock in shots. And that one was just way off the mark. He just has to settle in. It seems like he's playing in a, a rambunctious mental space. He just needs to bring it down, stay composed and poised because he can shoot the leather off the ball. Let's not yeah. misunderstand that. He's not shown that yet in a Maryland uniform. He's 0 for 5 tonight, 3 for 23 now from 3 to start his freshman year. A lot of those came in that UMBC game. He hit a half-court shot and a couple triples in that one, and that was their last contest out. So it takes time. Freshmen have to get those extra game reps. Reese almost pulled that rebound away. Ader trying to back down on Kaiser to call his foul. Foul is called against the freshman. Next day, on-demand replays, multi-view to watch up to four games at once, and the 24-7 Maryland channel. There's no plus like home. Subscribe, Dan. Gator's got nice color shoes on Gator. What, what color would you say those are? Those are seafoam green. Okay. Yeah, those are good. <laughs> you nailed the color. You got the whole color palette right in front of you. I actually do. <laughs> 
It's like Harris Smith stepped out of bounds. Those are today, so it's good. Yeah. All right. Double up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys talk about that before the game? Actually, no. It was, I was getting all the Hair Jordan information on <laughs> Kaiser for South uh, Alabama. Journalism first. That's right. Gator bounces that one away, and it's Jameer Young who brings it up the floor for Maryland, wheeling his way to the basket for two. Jameer Young has a different gear when it comes to open court play for the Terps. Tough to stop that, tough to guard it. And then full body control, even going that quickly, has full body control to finish with finesse. Dante Scott locking down on Melinder. Bounce pass, Land was cutting to the basket, can't finish. Gets it back and scores. Nice persistence there inside for South Alabama. Land came from St. Francis, a transfer. It was on the all-rookie team in the Northeast Conference a few years ago. Punched out by Margrave, a steal for South Alabama. Melender goes up, he gets two. Still a lot of time, and Maryland can ill afford empty possessions, especially in the open for the Big Ten portion of the season to begin. Terrence Shannon Jr. knocked in five threes in their game earlier today. I mean, everyone is on the precipice of competing at a high level, and you love to see it. Zach Eady still towering over oh, yeah. the Big Ten for Purdue. Towering over, I and mean, Maryland has done a tremendous job here in the second half. A 34-16 advantage in paint points and a 14-5 advantage on second chance points. So they have great effort and energy and force on the interior. The rebound there for Julian Reese. That gives him 14. His career high is 16. He's got a chance for that here tonight. As South Alabama comes away with the basketball there. Reese had 16 rebounds in a game in Lincoln last season. Dante Scott tips it away, trying to run it down. And a good job by Melender to stay with it for South. By the way, kudos to the Maryland coaching staff. You know, it's been a lot of lackadaisical dressing from coaches since <laughs> COVID, but they have got the suits over there on the sideline for Maryland. Sharp as attack. Melender <laughs> couldn't get that one to drop. Geronimo gets the rebound. Getting good second and third sides of this zone attacked with passes, but they still didn't get any dribble drives to collapse that defense in there. Now the three-point shooting continues to be almost... Uh, don't go down with this shit. <laughs> no, he got that. <laughs> Melender at the free throw line. A lot of those shots are, are forced from the outside without testing the interior, right? And even if that shot doesn't go up, if you throw the ball to the block or throw the ball to the nail or that logo area at the high post, if it comes back out, you're going to have a cleaner look at those threes. There you go. It's young. That's a three, and it's no good. Another missed three, four for 28 in this game for Maryland. But I like the paint three. I saw Dante Scott get right into the paint and then kicked it out. Young had a clean look. And Geronimo got loose near the baseline again, and a foul is called. Maryland hasn't scored in the last Maryland. We mentioned the four starters in double figures, but those are the only four Terps that have scored tonight. Geronimo is 13. Young Prior to the UMBC game, he was talking about that Villanova contest, and he said, I didn't really like the shots that we got because you know, our chemistry is still being developed right now. And we have those three players who played heavy minutes last season for Maryland. And then there were some disjointed reads and reactions on the offensive side. And, you know, young players like Jamie Kaiser kind of catching the ball and thinking, I have to shoot it right away instead of working the defense down. Yeah. Lender called for the foul there, about to go onto a breakaway. So that is an intentional foul called on Melender, which is why Young has the open shot here. In the Big Ten so far this season. We're talking about his scoring prowess, but he's a nice initiator and distributor. Right, right, hey, four. there 
at the top. Dante Scott. Let's see, Dante Scott was afforded an open look because Geronimo was right there at the high post occupying that defender that would have closed out to that shot. Coming up on the four minute mark here. Maryland's 65 points have been spread around through just four players. Nobody else has scored. Jones got by Young. Reese comes over and swats another. His fourth block tonight. A foul was called right before that shot window. Dante Scott has 19 points. This is Maxwell Land at the free throw line making the first. So glad we're early out of the gates of the season. And that's what Kevin Willard was talking about, the continuity of the chemistry and how they have to continue to develop that. And it happens in games. So you have to, you have to learn somehow. Experience is the best teacher, everybody says, but you got to get that experience. Off the front of the rim there for Geronimo and a rebound for South Alabama. Gator with the strong take in a basket for South Alabama. He's had 15 points tonight. He and Margrave have had good games on the South Alabama side. Another tough bucket in there for Gator. Jameer Young for three. That's another opportunity for Maryland from three-point range that did not fall down. Five for 30 in this game from three-point range. Even well below where they've been, which has not been good. Right. And that's something that they're going to need to get better at as the season progresses because teams are going to start packing in the paint there. And they're going to be bigger players in there that they're going to have to contend with inside. Now they're not going to be able to do what they've done in the paint tonight against some of the larger Big Ten players around the conference. They're going to have to shift and move and make that defense work hard and have better spacing so they have to really go a long way to attack closeouts. Geronimo gets knocked out by Land. Back on the other end, Reese gets it right back. Gets two more plus the foul. <laughs> Whatever Julian Reese weighs, he's a big man. And Margrave just seemed to not realize he was there. That's what happens in a crowded airport. And I don't know how people <laughs> bump into me. I mean, you don't see me sound six, two, six, three. Like, I don't get it. 18 points, 15 rebounds for Reese tonight, plus four blocks, couple steals. It's been a great night for Reese. Yes. Margrave gets the sh shot off, but nowhere near. As Maryland has all their starters out here with under two minutes to go and a nice, healthy lead. Good spacing again. You got Geronimo creeping underneath and Reese right there at the nail. Ball was almost still on the rim when yeah. Geronimo pulled it down. He was way up there. South Alabama a shot against Davidson or UAB or Villanova with a healthier roster now that they've had some practices and time together. No question, and it was a lot of their interior players who were injured, and that's what he was saying, right? It was a month almost with those guys not being able to practice. It was only Julian Reese inside and he didn't really have anybody to battle against so he's trying to gain form as well good defense from geronimo and a foul at the end howell could not find any on december 6th so those early conference games early december conference games get that greg manning assistant coach for Maryland and the air of julian reese and that was his scout today for the terps Maryland with a nice second half. They played a narrow game in the first half. But they really stretched out, went 21 to 4 on a run to start the second half. That's given them a big lead. Did it by getting touches in the paint. And that has made a world of difference for the Terps to take full control of this game in the second. He's the only starter that hasn't scored, and that remains after the first free throw attempt. Willard has said competes at a level that no other freshman competes with, right? And now that those missed free throws are going to sit with him when he puts his head on the pillow, but that's just going to make him better. 
He's going to focus even more on his mechanics and his timing on those. A couple more for Gator, closing in on a good night. 17 points for him. And one last possession here for Maryland, up by 13. Dribble that out and force South Alabama to come out of that zone and pick him up, and they're not coming out of there. So Maryland sitting on their third win, all of them here at Xfinity Center. This will be the 14th consecutive win at home for Maryland. As they let the shot clock drain, and South Alabama will do the same here to end it. But JMU picked number one in their conference, so it's going to be fun for them to get started in their conference play soon as well. 68.